welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I wanted to show you the stuff that I use for making my manga. Okay, first of all you can see it's colored and everything here is done on hand. Uh, I really don't use the computer in it, in, at all except in the editing part and the, um, you know, mishmash music part which is putting music on the scenes just to make the, the manga reading more fun. Now this is from my chapter 1 and as you can see I uploaded it on YouTube so you will, might like to check that out. Okay, so first of all when you're doing a manga you have to choose paper. Now the paper that I'm using here is size is A4 and this paper is Canson. Uh, its thickness is 140 grams and the more you go up the more your paper will be thicker and the more it will stand watercolors. Now uh, this one is found in the stationery shops all over Egypt since I'm living in Egypt. So this is, uh, I looked at this and I thought you know this will be great for manga work. Okay let's see what I have now. Okay moving on to step two which is doing your story. Basically, I start off with sort of imagining what I want to do and I just draw it. And I, you can see I don't use any sort of a storyboard or thumbnail art or anything like that. I have the thing in my head and I just do it. So yeah, it's sort of like winging it or just going with the flow. So let's see, I have Cordelia and her sister and they're both going to the mall. And uh, you can know or check it out on my YouTube channel and you will see chapter 1 there and if you have read it you will know why they're going to the mall so anyways I have two characters walking basically and now I drew two Cordelia and her sister walking and then the conversation is sort of totally imagined or I sort of have it in my head so I write it down in, in bubbles and if I have something like a thought here we will have this cloudy bubble effect and I use etch pencils for, for this because I don't want, you know, the leftover uh, marks to appear. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is it when you're doing your, your work and all that. Once I'm done with my drawings, I do tonings with my pencils because I want to give my characters more different color ranges, so I do toning. And I use Faber Castle pencils to do that. I have the ranges from etch till 60. I'm sure you can find the Faber Castle in any place in the world because they're a global brand. So yeah. And after I've done with the toning, I colored my characters. And I have a different technique for for characters than from ba backgrounds. So I'll be bringing my colors to show you now. Okay, now this is the colors that I use in coloring my characters. I do use different package when I'm doing backgrounds and different package when I'm doing uh, characters so I can have more different color ranges. Okay, so this is um, Faber Castle, the 48 package, and they're watercolor pencils. I'm sure you can find this in every part in the world because Faber Castle is international. Now as you can see here, uh, I've got two layers and here in the second layer you have a sharpener and a brush. Now the wonderful thing about these colors is that you can color your characters and you have the effect of, of pencil colors and if you want to give them that effect of watercolors just bring in this nice brush dip it into some water and just go over your uh, your coloring and you will have the same effect of watercolors the best part about this thing is that your watercolors sort of like is limited you won't go you know the watercolors won't escape or go anywhere else because they, they you just doing some melting around and um, you don't do anything more than that so it, if, even if it ran out you know it, it won't appear because you know it will be this very much small so yeah it's basically limited in the area you're currently you're coloring your character so it's much more easier to use than your normal watercolors this is for me because 
It's gray because I'm not really that good in watercolors. Okay, let me show you my next set of package. Okay, my next set of colors is <clears throat> these guys. These are your basic watercolors and I do use them for my backgrounds because I, if I use the same technique that I'm using on my characters, it's going to take me forever to do it. So yeah, watercolors is great. And uh, the best thing about watercolors, it doesn't... You know, when you're doing de uh, when you're doing backgrounds, you don't have to put a lot of detailing in as you're doing in characters. So this is the best thing best thing about them. You can just be so random and just you know color over your backgrounds. Okay, so you can see this guy here. Basically, 24 colors, and they're not uh, they're not just 12. This package is great because it's tiny and and can take it anywhere with you. And here is another one. This is 24 2. Now this, uh, the reason why I'm using two different packages is because I want to have more different range colors. And I don't want to do the shading parts or the toning parts. So yeah, this is it. And this is what I found in my stationery shop here in Egypt. I'm sure you can find a lot of other colors. I just, I'm trying to give some different ranges for me to choose from. And yeah, those are my colors in Faber Castle too. So yeah, I use. You can multi, you add that up and see how much it calculates. Okay, I want to talk to you a bit about me uh, coloring my characters. Uh, first of all, I use an inking, uh, Uniball, water, and fade proof uh, inking pen. And uh, I use the 0.1 and the 0.5, so something really uh, small or really thin for small areas, and something which is a medium sort of thickness that can be used easily, and um, it's really easy to use. So anyways, when I'm doing my characters, I do some tonings with different uh, Pencil degrees. As I said before, I have the ranges from H to 6B. So if you look here, Cordelia here, I do add um, an HB shade uh, base. Color up or tone the hair with HB base, and then I just add the brown, and then I just use my watercolors on them. So you can see, uh, you can see that and how it comes. And that's one of the tricks that you can use when you want to give yourself more range of colors. Just add up some pencil base and just color it up with your water colors or your um, water pencil colors to give more range to yourself. And you, of course you can use much, much more ranges of pencils. So I just added up my colors and I found that I was using about 96 colors and uh, you know with the, my toning technique and uh, mixing colors together I can give myself more ranges of colors to use from. But the thing I want to show you, it's probably the last thing in this video, I want to show you where I keep my work. I keep it in this thing, I don't know what it is called, I think it's called a clear book. It's something that you can put your work in. Now, uh, this package basically is something like 60 papers, but you can double it up. You can see it's transparent here. Uh, and it's great to protect your work from dust or anything like that. And you can, as I, as I said, you can double it up from 60 pages and it can become like 120 pages. So, yeah, it can stand up till 120 uh, pages, but I'm sure you can find, um, you know, more big ranges, like 80 and 100. Uh, so yeah, that's about all today, and I had this hand and feet request, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, but I'm gonna do the hand request sort of like, uh, separately, and the feet request uh, in another separate video. Now, uh, college is starting seriously now, and I might slow down on the pace of, uh, me doing drawing videos and all that, so I hope you don't get frustrated, but I will try to do your request. But, you know, college is really is difficult and it's really annoying. Uh, so, yeah. It will take most of my time, but I promise I will try to get your how to draw videos as soon as possible and keep your requests in. I might actually uh, be um, able to do them in the weekends or something like that. So that's about all. And I'll see you soon.